What do you get when you have a Broadway professional and a camera crew? Long story short, you get a lot of cool info when you get Showbiz You Luminaries. She may not have taken her first dance class till the age of 16, but that didn't stop Broadway choreographer Michelle Lynch from dancing straight to the top. Michelle recounts her journey from dance class to choreographing shows like The Coast of Utopia, Everyday Rapture, and Little Miss Sunshine. First of all, welcome. Thank you. To Showbiz You. You've known me the longest of any guests that we've talked about. Excellent. And let's talk about when you first got the bug for this, because I, mm. was, I was around when all of a sudden mm -hmm. you said, hmm, I, I can actually do this. It began with seeing a show um, that I think this is probably a common story for so many dancers, but I saw dance in when I was 16, and I had never taken a dance class, but I understood um, the language. It was like hearing a foreign language for the first time and understanding it with choreography and with dance. I was like, I know what this, I, I know what he's saying with movement. And so I was just hooked and I came home and I said to my mom, I'm going to be a choreographer. She goes, why don't you take a dance class first? So, um, <laughs> and then I went to UC Irvine because they had a really good dance department. Now, had you taken dance before I think I had to... taken like two classes in Pasadena and I thought, oh, I can do this. You know, ignorance is bliss. And it was actually Chet Walker who um, said to me, you know, if you want it, do it but don't do it half ass. Go full on and do it. And so I took his advice and, you know. And you took class at school and you drove I up took to class LA at school and, and I, yeah, and then I would, I would take like five a day. It was, in, it was deeply obsessive behavior. Because a lot of people say, well, you have to start when you're in the womb if you're mm -hmm. gonna be a dancer. Well, I think, I think for some people, yes. And I think certainly for something like ballet, you know, you need those years. Um, but I think I always knew I wanted to choreograph, so... Well, I, I happened to be there in one of those times when you were quitting the business. Oh, okay, so see, yeah, <laughs> happens a lot. And you had come to peace with, maybe I won't ever dance on mm -hmm. Broadway. Mm -hmm. And then it was in class, you got mm -hmm. a call from your agent, mm -hmm. and you said, eh, it's my agent, I'll get it later. Mm -hmm. Called her later, they said they're going on, and she said, yeah, you know, I'm mm -hmm. not going. Mm -hmm. And then you go, and what happens? Was that when I got it? Yeah. Yeah, I do think there is a level of detachment that is important because if you want it so badly, I see it now sitting on the other side. When people come in and want it so badly, there's not even room for us to 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 let us in on the other side. You know, mm -hmm. when you want it so badly, there's this energy shield, I think. And when you have this detachment and you're just sort of like, oh, whatever, it just allows people in and you want to get to know them more. And you're like, oh, who is this person who doesn't need me, you know, or need this job so much? I want to know more of you. Yeah, and then you got your first Broadway show, mm -hmm. and that was almost a relief and a validation at a standpoint, which mm -hmm. kind of launched mm -hmm. you into... I think I'd wanted it, you know, since I was 16 so badly, and then when it finally came, I remember I got in, I was in it for a week, and we got our closing notice. <laughs> <laughs> so I had three weeks on Broadway. Okay. <laughs> Tears were streaming down my face at the final show, but I loved every minute of it. Another area that, that brought you back in was to work as an assistant choreographer. Mm, mm -hmm. And can you talk a little bit about that journey and that experience? That was a gift. That's an amazing experience. You know, I worked as an assistant out in L when I lived in L.A., and I assisted some choreographers out there. Um, but the biggest learning experience I think I've had was assisting probably Jerry Mitchell and, and, and assisting him at the beginning of his career and then being there when he reached, you know, a higher level of success and being privy to that and um, because that's stuff you can't learn in school. You know, you can't buy that. You can't buy sitting in a Broadway house and watching what goes on and watching um, a brand new show go from start to finish. And I, I was fortunate to work on successful musicals as an assistant um, and watch their, their you know, journey. That you just can't learn, you can't get that anywhere. Even on the other side as a dancer, you get parts of it, but you're not in the room. You're not in the mm -hmm. trenches. You're not there going through everything. And then I've had this amazing experience of working as a choreographer on tons of new musicals that weren't very successful. <laughs> and that's been a huge learning experience too, because you need that. That's almost, you learn almost more. And I also knew, I also know like where it needs to get to. You know, yeah. so that's been actually as hard as the past, say, 10 years have been doing it on my own and being involved with a lot of, things that haven't succeeded as far as I would have liked them to succeed. It's been a huge gift, you know, and so when I get a musical that does work, I, 
you feel it and you know it. And now flashing forward, you're the one that's mm -hmm. sitting behind the table and you mm -hmm. have all these teens and 20-somethings that are coming in with these mm -hmm. amazing dreams. Mm -hmm. um, if you could give them a little bit of advice, what would be that advice? The advice would be don't waste your si time doubting yourself, you know, and, and trust that you chosen this and go for it. And, you know, if I look back, if I looked back on my calendars of my life and, and I look back at the times that I had off, like a month here or two months here, you know, or even a week and those times I'm just like, oh, I'm, I don't have the money and I don't have this or I don't have a job and I have this whole day free. I would look back at now and go, oh, my God, you had a month <laughs> off in New York City. You know, there's so much to do. I would have enjoyed that time. I would have gone to museums. I would have. You know, done, I just would have done so much more with my time instead of spent it worrying and stressing because rent always got paid. I always had food to eat. It somehow always worked out. Note to self. You know? <laughs> so I would have just... now. I, but I do look at time differently. When I have time off now, I look at it as the gift of time. And I try and enjoy it because when you don't have it, yeah. you want it. And can you think back to one of the first times you you got that job mm -hmm. oh, I'm now being paid mm -hmm. as a choreographer mm -hmm. everything I've wanted to do somebody's mm -hmm. giving me mm -hmm. what what was that terrifying because then you, you know it's so easy to judge that's I think the easiest thing in the world to do is judge and the hardest thing to do is okay put yourself is to put yourself out there and know that you're gonna be judged and I know that I judge a lot less when I go see shows and I'm much more forgiving and I'm because there's so much that goes into it and, you know, it takes a lot of guts to put your ideas out there. And it is like standing naked and because people are looking at it and judging it. Yeah. So it's terrifying. Um, and I think I just care. I just now that I've been doing it for a while, I just care less what people think. And I think that's very freeing. Um, that's probably just a good lesson in life. They're all life lessons, ultimately. Don't care what people think. Detach. <laughs> Any other pearls of wisdom you want to share as we're now coming Enjoy to the your end? Time. <laughs> Enjoy Trust, your time. Trust, believe. 